it's great to see you coming back. What? This is your first time here? Oh man, that's even better. I'm John Zadar. I'm the host of On Top and Hot, and this is February 1st. It is Wednesday. Now, first off, I would like to apologize to any of you who follow me and were waiting around last night for a video. I am so sorry. I was working on it. I diligently try to never, ever miss putting out a video. But there are things that come up that I can't control. Power outages, internet connectivity, and God forbid a life circumstance. Last night, our internet went down. I was halfway through that video and feeling mighty good about it. And then it came back 70 minutes later. I still had time, jumped on into it, and 10 minutes later, the internet went down again and did not come back up until, well, I'm not sure when it came back up, but it was here when I woke up this morning. So I do sincerely apologize for that. Sometimes it seems life acts more like a feral cat than a house pet. All right, before I forget, I want to remind you I got a live streaming event tomorrow. We do them every Thursday at 4 o'clock. Soon as that bell goes off on the market at 4, I am hitting my button and going live streaming. Me and Lily Starr, we go on for about an hour. We talk to our viewers. Come join us. Bring your favorite tickers. We'll take a look at them, tell you our opinions. As you know, on this show, we like to talk about OTC and penny stocks. We are looking for stocks that have potential, stocks that can make us money. We're just not talking about any old stocks. Now, we do trade both OTC and penny stocks, and there is a big difference. A penny stock is any stock under five bucks. Ton of them on the OTC. Ton of them on the major exchange, too. It's not about what market they're on. It's just about price. And to be completely honest, I like trading those major exchange penny stocks. There's a lot of advantages. They're free to trade. There's no transaction fees. You can trade them pre-market and after-market. Some great gains to be gotten there. And all the big money's up in the major exchanges. So yeah, I'm kind of fond of trading penny stocks on the major exchanges. But I like the opportunities available on the OTC with these startup companies and new technology and the big, huge gains. Matter of fact, all that news right there, that comes from the OTC market. You've got about eight or nine days worth over there. Oldest is up at the top, newest is down at the bottom. And it is prime, juicy news. You know what sort of news I like to look at. So that's what you're going to find over there. Now, when I'm doing research on my OTC stock specifically, this is the site I use, and I suggest you use it as well. This is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC. That's all the information we're looking for. Filings, financials, share structure, everything is updated here. So if you're running around the internet sorting through all that outdated information, trying to find the most current, you're wasting a lot of time. Come here. It's not just going to save you time. It's going to save you frustration. All right, let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. Ooh, God, please go up because that's looking very sad right now. That's worse than yesterday. It is worse than yesterday. E-gads. We were at $1.7 billion yesterday. Today, we're at $1.5. We were at... What was it? Five something yesterday, seven the day before. I don't know, but we're under five now. You know, five is like first gear, 10 uh, billion is second gear. Well, this here is reverse. <sighs> we are going backwards there, folks. And our trades, my God, we are right on the floor at 250,000. I tell you every day, we're stuck between 250 and 300,000, and we're stuck on the floor right now. So it doesn't look like our OTC market is in any big hurry to change. Well, I've got some stocks I want to share with you today. I've got some warrants. I've got some regular old common stock. And I got some updates on SPAC warrants that I told you I would be giving you. All right, let's jump on into this. We're going to start all this off by looking at a SPAC warrant first. Now, if you've been following my shows, you know exactly what I'm talking about. For those of you who don't, let me give it to you real briefly in a nutshell. A SPAC, a special purpose acquisition company, also known as a blank check company, comes onto the major exchanges securing a ticker and a spot there, but they have no business. They have no operations. They're making no money. What they are doing is looking for a private company that wants to go public. They've already secured the position, so they want to make a deal with someone who wants to make it easier to get up on the major exchanges. So they look for a merger or an acquisition. Now, when you get into a SPAC, the shares are $10 a share. All SPACs are $10. And here's the goofy part. The price of that share is locked to $10 until they consummate or close a deal. 
Now, they've only got so much time to do this, 18 to 24 months. If they fail to close and make a deal, you get your money back, $10 a share. And that's why it's locked, because of that guarantee. Yeah, money back guarantee, how about that? So when these companies have news, say they're in merger talks or they're gonna sign a letter of intent, the SPAC itself, that $10 share is not going to move. I mean, it might move a couple pennies. We can bid it up, we can bid it down. But if they go out of business and liquidate, it's only worth $10 a share. So why buy it at $10.50? So by default, it is the warrants that get all the attention. The warrants are penny stocks, literally under a dime, under a quarter, under 50 cents. They are penny stocks. And with just a little volume, they burst. They run huge gains, hundreds, thousands, even tens of thousands of percent. So that's why we like to look at these warrants attached to SPACs. The SPAC here is Pono Capital Core. The ticker for the warrant is P-O-N-O-W. She finished the day at 12 cents with almost 7% gains. And of course, she is on the NASDAQ, which means you're going to be able to trade this pre-market, aftermarket as well. Now, I've got two pieces of news here. Now, remember what I was saying about there being a deadline? They get 18 to 24 months. Well, they were are approaching their deadline very quickly. Matter of fact, I want to jump into that piece of news right here. They tell us here that Pono Capital and Airwinds Technologies have deposited an additional half a million dollars into the company's trust account for its public stockholders, representing an aggregate of 10 cents per public share, allowing the company to extend the period of time it has to consummate its initial business combination by three months from November to February 13th. The one coming up, February 13th in 12 days. So they had to pay money to buy that extra time. And all that money is gone. It goes on to the shares. So now our $10 shares are worth, as they said, an additional 10 cents, $10.10 if they fail. Now we'll get $10.10 back. So they've invested more money that they're not going to get back unless they consummate a deal. Well, they just told us here that they are working with Airwinds Technologies. Now, they have a piece of news back here about it, but it actually goes to Seeking Alpha, which is just, you know, an article. Well, I got my own article right here. So they tell us that Pono Capital shareholders have approved a planned merger with Japanese air mobility technology developer Airwinds. The SPAC and Airwinds agreed to merge in September. The equity value of the two companies together is $750 million. The shareholders voted for the deal on January 27th, just a couple days ago, and the shares of the combined firm are expected to trade on the NASDAQ under the symbol AWIN. And that's it, folks. There's no other news. What is it that we're looking at? That window right there, February 13th. That's the cutoff date. They paid a half a million dollars for three more months from November to February. They have already approved the deal. I found this filing. They had a vote the other day, right? And they had seven proposals up there. Now I can show you the proposals. Proposal one was to approve and adopt the agreement plan of merger. Proposal two, change the name. Proposal three, change certain provisions of the Certificate of Incorporation. Proposal four, restate the Certificate of Incorporation. Proposal five, elect directors. Proposal seven, adopt Airwinds Technologies, Inc. Equity Incentive Plan. Proposal seven, the issuance of 60 million more shares. And proposal eight, to consider a vote upon a proposal to adjourn the special meeting. Why did I just read all that to you? Nowhere in there, not once did it say anything about voting on an extension of time. They have to have this back open if they're gonna close this deal. The date that it closes is February 13th. That is to say the SPAC is out of business. They are liquidating on February 14th if they do not have this deal, this merger, closed and consummated by February 13th. That is a hardcore date. So there's our well-defined window between now and February 13th. And the stock can't move until they close this deal, which could just be in two weeks, 12 days. So what should get the excitement? Where should all the attention? go to the warrant. Let's go take a look at that chart. 
as you expected we are over here at think or swim this is the free trading platform td ameritrade gives you just for signing up for their free trading account you can use it anytime you like absolutely free now before we jump into pono's warrant let me catch you up on some of the due diligence i've been doing on my spac warrants right here is some news that i've accumulated over the last two days now this isn't everything out there this is just some that i've accumulated and one of them i really want you to pay attention to here is lcaa they are merging with lotus lotus the iconic hot car brand absolutely they are coming on to a ten dollar spac rather than an ipo if this company came on to an ipo they could easily be at 50 70 80 dollars a share just to start so they're going to be starting off at ten dollars i think this is going to get a lot of attention the deal is worth 5.2 billion dollars now i found this yesterday and since yesterday the warrant is already running she's up to 74 cents right now but i think that is just the start folks you see how big of a deal this could be and there's other stuff there as well and i know you can't see it all but this is the list of warrants i've got I've got about 93 warrants here. I'll flip it so you can see the other side. There were some losers today. There were some winners, but we didn't have any huge runners. We had one hit 100% here, 67%. So we had some gains. We just didn't have any huge surges. Now, let me say this, folks. There is no reason to let 100 or 200% on a SPAC warrant go by because you're waiting for this 1,000% surge. Think of it this way. There are two motions for a warrant. There is the run, the surge. It's going up, 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 up. You see it. It's just rising. Then you've got the pop, stop, and drop. It will pop up maybe 100, 150, 200%. Stop. Just sit there and do nothing. And what's most likely going to happen, it's going to drop after that. And then you may get another pop, stop, and drop. Folks, take your money on those. Take your money on a pop, stop, and drop. When it goes up and you're up 100%, make sure you're looking at the ask bid. Make sure you're getting the price you want. Obviously, it's going to be lower than the price, but you don't want it too far spread. And if you get yourself a gain, take that gain. Let it drop. Buy back in at the same price you were in before. And if she pops again and stops, take that gain. And if you happen to be in it when it runs, fantastic. But you know what? This is a way to take gains when we don't know exactly if this stock is going to be one of those runners. There's no need to watch gains go by that you could have put in your pocket again and again and again. All right. So let's jump on in over here to P-O-N-O-W. This is the warrant for the SPAC Pono Capital. We are looking at a four hour, six month chart right now. We had a high back here of 22 cents. That was all the way back in May. We had a low here of a penny and a half. That was in November. And since the low, well, she got right down to it again. You can see she smacked that low again. And it was the second time she hit it that she decided to do something about it. And she has slowly been climbing up. She's been crossing all of her SMAs, working her way towards that 200-day SMA, and she is right under it right now. On top of everything she should be, on top of the 9, the 20, and the 50, all in the right places. We just need to get these three SMAs on top of that 200. Our technicals are very strong right now. Our PPO, our percentage price oscillator, very much like the MACD. MACD works with the whole price percentage price oscillator works with the percentage of the price right so this has been climbing for 10 days look at our macd that's been climbing for god over a month it looks like she's crossed the signal line she has crossed and bounced off of the line underneath but everything is still going good and our rsi is up here at 66 our volume isn't strong we don't have a lot of volume in but then when you're looking at warrants on SPACs, I don't know, maybe warrants altogether, you normally don't see a lot of volume. 5,000, 10,000, that's a lot of volume. You might see 50, 100, sometimes you'll see a half a million if it's a really hot warrant. But normally, you're not going to see millions of shares. They are going to be small volumes. Take a look at our 20-day, one-hour view. Slowly, steady climbing. Look at our 50 day. She had a turn right on that low bubble, turned up, and she's been climbing ever since. Price has been working her way up, pretty much staying on top of the 20. We are getting some tag offs onto the 50 day SMA. 
Our technicals are looking pretty good. Our MACD is strong, pushing up. We got a strong PPO. And look here, folks. You see this line going up? Yeah, my PPO. This is my ADX. That is trend continuation. As long as the direction of the line hasn't changed, you know, we got one here, one here, one here. There's three different directions here. Well, each direction means the trend has changed. So we had a trend change right here, and it says that she is starting to climb. So everything looks good here. Looks like she's ready to move up. And what we need her to do is get up over that 200 on the four hour, and we could see a strong surge. Uh, yeah, right there, the four hour. <laughs> That's not where I was trying to go, but that's what I was talking about. Absolutely. Five day, five minute. All right, our five day, five minute. She is climbing slowly with a lot of volatility. She's bouncing around here. She's come right back down to this point again. Matter of fact, I'm going to draw a support right there. She's broke it. She's come down under that twice. Now that's twice she's broke on a low. There's a low. She hit that low again. That's what we saw earlier hit the low twice, and it was the second low bubble that she took off on. Well, we got a huge bar coming off of that second low bubble right here, and she has pulled back some, but it looks like she's kept way more than 50. Technicals, PPO has had a strong bounce. Look at that, boink. Same thing with our MACD, boink. And even our RSI, everything took a huge drop there and bounced up quick. Boy, that was a buy point right there. And right now we are at 12 cents. She hit a high of 12 and a half cents. I think she's ready to pop, folks. She's got a very tight window of opportunity the next 12 days. Now, some of you are asking, what's going to happen after it closes? Well, let's see here. First off, the stock's going to be alive, so people can now invest in the stock or the warrant. Well, the stock just became alive. So I would anticipate more attention being given to the stock than the warrant. But as the stock price rises, the warrant becomes worth more. And if people are ignoring it and it's not rising, somebody, some people are going to say, look at the value in that warrant. And all of a sudden, it's going to catch up. So even if you don't get out before the deal closes, that doesn't mean you've missed out. There is still lots of potential in these warrants. And last thing I want to say about warrants, if you do get stuck with them, maybe you want to hold them because they can make you money in the future. Warrants with SPACs work like this. They have a five-year time limit. From the time the deal is consummated, you've got five years to buy a share of the company stock with your warrant and $11.50. That's right, $11.50. It's already a set price. So anytime in the next five years, where could that stock be in four years? Like that Lotus one. You think Lotus is going to be near $11? Shoot, that could be up at $150. Bucks, and you're going to be able to buy a share for $11.50 today. Turn around and sell it today and put all that profit in your pocket today. That's why people like warrants. Warren Buffett piles those warrants up in companies he believes is going to grow because it's just money in the bank down the road. All right, let's go look at a regular old common stock. It has a warrant, but we're actually looking at the stock. Got another penny stock from the NASDAQ for you. This is ticker WGS, Gene DX Holdings. Now, this is just a common stock, not a warrant. However, they do have a warrant if you're interested in looking at it. However, we're going to focus in on the common stock. So WGS, they have had no new news come out. Matter of fact, they have got no news out. There's not one stitch, no news presses over there at all. But they did have a slew of filings come out. And a couple of them caught my attention and can definitely get this chart moving. So WGS finished the day at about 38.5 cents and almost 10% down today. Could be a buying opportunity. So we've got no description here what the company does and there's no news, which is where I normally get them from. So we're gonna jump into a filing here and I have bulleted a few pieces of information to give you an overall view of what this company is and what they're doing. Gene DX is focused on delivering personalized and actionable health insights to inform diagnosis, direct treatment, and improve drug discovery. We are uniquely positioned to accelerate the use of genomics and leverage large-scale clinical data to enable precision medicine as the standard of care. In the last 20 years, we have amassed one of the world's largest rare disease data sets and remain a leader in genomics. 
Today, we are powered by our industry-leading genomic interpretation platform and Centralis, our innovative health information platform. We believe that exome and genome testing will become the standard of care, transforming the healthcare and improving patients' quality of life. Now, they have been downsizing. August and November of last year, they closed some facilities, and they've been letting go of a lot of people. They have also received a warning from the NASDAQ. They are under a dollar. They've been under a dollar for too long. When major exchange stocks go under a dollar, they can actually be kicked off of the major exchange and thrown down to the OTC. Now, they get a warning, and this company's gotten theirs. They get six months to get that price up over a dollar for 10 consecutive days. Once they do that, they're out of hot water. Well, their cutoff date for that is June 26th. And what is the price right now? We are at 38 cents. So they've got a few more months to get that up over a dollar. And the last piece of news here on January 9th, they changed their name from Semaphore Holdings to Gene DX Holdings. All right, let's go see what sort of relative volume we have around this company today. Well, it's about, uh, it's more than double, 2.6 to 6.1 million. So we do have more people looking at it, more trades going on. Share structure. Had to go look this one up. If I remember correctly, we are looking at 168 million shares in the float, which isn't too bad considering they've got 386 outstanding. We got about half of them. Financials for WGS. Well, they are making money. At the end of 2021, they had $212 million. We know that's millions because we've got to put three zeros behind any of the numbers that you see down here. Quarterly, let's see if we get something for 2022. Uh, it's kind of all over the place, isn't it? $53 million first quarter, $36 million second quarter, had a bang up third quarter of $83 million, and we don't know what the last quarter is, though it may be here right now if we wanted to dive into it. So they are making good money. I can't say it's regular, but they are pulling in the big bucks. And disclosures. All right, as I said, they've had a slew of them here. This is all for January right here, and we are not going to go through all of them. But most of these are about shares. Shares of stock one way or the other. They just put a whole bunch of shares onto the market in a public offering. And then these 13Ds and 13Gs, you've got new people coming into the company buying so many shares that they are now part owners. They are getting a percentage of the company, they're getting voting rights, and we have had two of those. So we've had more people come into the business and invest big money to become partial owners. Then you have this Form 4, which is what I want to show you right here. Yes. All right, this is Opco Health. I think this is a business, a company, not a person, but they are 10% owner of the company. Well, look at this, folks. Right there, they bought shares in this company. At 35 cents a share, they bought 14.2 million shares. Well, that's about a third of a dollar, so just divide that by three. You're looking at uh, $4.2 million that somebody just bought of common stock. This isn't preferred stock. These aren't warrants. This is stock on the market. Somebody is very interested in this company. That is a huge investment in a penny stock. That's what I think has got this stock looking good. The charts look warm. We're going to go look at them. But when somebody sees value and they're willing to drop that sort of money on it, maybe something's going on. Matter of fact, if I look back, we've got some more fours here. You could open those up and see what is going on. But I like the last four. I like the new owners. Everything is looking like something's about ready to happen. How's that chart look? Let's go see. WGS, six month, four hour chart. Over the last six months, we had a high of $2.48 back in August and about 1,100% down. We hit 22% in January. She has been falling underneath the 200 predominantly all of this time. And once she hit that low bubble, things changed. Once she hit that low bubble, she was underneath every single SMA. She pushed herself up on top of that 50 here, then made a distinct decision. She wanted to be on top of the 200. She beelined it. 
No pondering, no hesitation, just went straight to the 200. And right now she is negotiating her position up there, but she looks like she's winning the battle. She's on top of the 50 and on top of the 200. Our volume has been getting stronger these last few days compared to all the days before. Technicals. Our PPO, we had a crossover back here on that strong volume day, and she's been climbing ever since. Our MACD is pulling back just a wee bit right now. We got to watch that. And our RSI is pretty even keel. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. All right, as you can see, I've got some supports and resistances that I've drawn in here so we can have an idea of where we want this to go. So she hit that low bubble here underneath everything at 23 cents. Once she got over that 200 day SMA, she got excited pounded it up to 53 cents, over 100% gains right there. Fell fast, tried to get it back, and now she's negotiating with that 200, and it looks like she could be winning the battle. She is right here on top of everything. There's our 50, and right underneath it is our 200. They are right on top of each other, and the price is right on top of them. That's not bad. Our technicals, well, they look like they're preparing for a recovery. This could bounce, but it looks like it could actually break down. We could see some more fall there. Our MACD is pushing down right now, as is our RSI. We could get some more dip out of this. Let's see what we got on our five day, five minute. Okay. She was under the 200 here, took this heavy fall after she broke it. She really reacted hard, came down to this low, put herself back on top of the 200. It looks like she wants to stay up there. She's doing everything she can to stick on top of that 200. And where is she right now? Boy, she is right underneath it, right near it, so close. Our 50 day, our 200 and the price. She has been climbing after market hours. That's a good thing to see. We got a crossover on her PPO right now. MACD has had its crossover pushing up. Our green bars are accumulating. Our RSI is a bit tempted right now, not a lot of strength in it. But with that huge 14 million share purchase, about, uh, what was that, $4.2 million, there could be something going on. Maybe the insiders know something we don't. That's what we're looking for. Telltale signs that something's going to happen, even if we don't know what it is. So WGS, it might be worth considering. Maybe a little more DD. Hopefully you don't mind. I want to share with you another warrant. Is that okay? Great. This is Aurora Innovation. Her ticker for the company is AUR. The warrants ticker, a bit different. A-U-R-O-W. I don't know why they put that O in there, but that is the warrants ticker A-U-R-O-W. Now, as you've probably already guessed, Aurora Innovation is not a SPAC. We are looking at a warrant attached to an everyday normal company, not a SPAC. And I usually don't do that. So why are we looking at this one? Well, you know how we're finding these stocks, right? I'm doing a hunt. I'm looking for charts that have heat. Doesn't matter what they are. Then I go looking for that lingering news, something that was said to us a while back about something that's going to happen in the near future. And that is supposed to be the catalyst to move the chart. Well, this one fit the bill. That's why we're looking at it. So Aurora Innovation finished the day at about 29 cents with almost 4% drop. So what is this company all about? Pretty interesting, actually. Aurora is delivering the benefits of self-driving technology safely, quickly, and broadly to make transportation safer. The Aurora Driver, their number one product, is a self-driving system designed to operate multiple vehicle types from freight hauling semi-trucks to ride hailing passenger vehicles. And it underpins our other two products, Aurora Horizon and Aurora Connect. They're driver as a service products for trucking and ride hailing. Aurora is working with industry leaders across the transportation ecosystem, including Toyota, FedEx, Volvo Trucks, PACCAR, Uber, Uber Freight, US Express, Werner, Covenant, Schneider, and Ryder. You know most of those companies, don't you? Because they're big. Those are the companies that they're working with. So I see a lot of potential here with this self-driving technology that they have with those sort of customers. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, not big. 
to say the least. She actually fell more than 50% her normal volume. She's normally under the radar doing only 17,000 shares. Today, she did less than 7,000 shares. Share structure. They didn't give us anything over here, but then uh, I am looking at the warrant and not the stock. I did look up the stock though. It is 286 million. Not a great float, but not tremendously bad either. We can live with 286 million. Uh, financials for Aurora. Well, at the end of 2021, she had a good year, $82 million. Don't forget those three zeros. Year before, she did nothing. And the year before that, $19 million. A bit erratic. Let's take a look at our quarterly, see what's going on for 2022. Well, there's a, a wild jumping around there from 26 million to 41 million to 20 million. What? Down to less than $3 million in the third quarter of last year. That's a bit interesting. Real quick, I want to take a look at this balance sheet. Let's see what her total assets are. Total assets, she is at, uh, I got to add three zeros to those? I do. So that's $2.2 billion that they have in assets. And liabilities, look at that. Liabilities, they've only got $221 million. So they've got 10 times more assets than they do liabilities. That's a huge, huge plus. All right, financials disclosures. What do we got over here? Right, we do have a couple. All right, back here, we've got some Form 4s in November. Those Form 4s were actually sales. Insiders were selling some directors, not a lot. They were all small holdings. Maybe they had to buy groceries, pay the rent. I don't know. They weren't huge, but there were some sales back there. This 8K here, this is about new management coming in. And I do believe that this one here is also about the new management. No, these are about warrants. They're putting a whole bunch of warrants on the market. 8.9 million uh, warrants that will be able to be used to buy regular common shares, the shares you and I buy. But that's way down the road. It's not going to affect anything right now. Although, in saying that, we are looking at the warrants, right? They're putting more warrants out there right now. Now, I don't know if that's going to help or hurt. I honestly don't. Um, it could help. It could draw more people in, get these prices to rise because the warrants have value. You saw what their assets were. Their assets are 10 times their liabilities. And what else did I want to share with you here? No, we looked at that. Oh, I had one more piece of news. I wanted to share just a little bit of information. Uh, basically, this came out in uh, November, I think it was. So it was a ways back. Could be early December. They tell us here the Aurora driver is the autonomy system that underpins Aurora Horizon which is Aurora's subscription-based autonomous trucking services. So the service they're providing isn't just a vehicle that drives by itself. They're providing a service that allows that truck to, buy, to drive by itself, and you got to pay for it every month or every year. Now, here's the part I wanted to zoom in on. Aurora expects to reach feature complete at the end of Q1 2023, which will indicate the capabilities required for commercial launch and have been implemented in the Aurora driver and all policy interventions have been removed. So what we're saying here is they're close. They're getting close to that point to where they're going to be able to start doing something. They're already making some money. I'm not quite sure how they're doing it. They've got a lot of assets. Not quite sure where all that came from. But they've got technology here that they're using with big companies like Ryder and FedEx and Uber and Uber Freight. So they are set to go. When that's going to happen, I really don't know. Let's go look at that chart and see what it tells us. Looking at the warrant for Aurora Innovations, ticker A-U-R-O-W. This is a six-month, four-hour chart. She has been dribbling downhill all of this time, predominantly under that 200, though she did have two wild breakouts here, one in June and one in September. This one went from $0.40 cents to $1.40. You're looking at 350% gains. This one went from $0.30 cents to $1.64. 550% gains. There was no volume on this one and a ton of volume on this one. So it does happen, but it is rare. And you can see right here, she has changed directions. I'm going to grab myself my channel here and I'm going to poke it right there and drag it out and see what we end up with here. All right, let's zoom in. 
So bouncing off of that 10 cent low bubble, that was at the very end of December. You can see she's had a change of direction. She is now starting to come up. Even our 50 day SMA is now starting to climb. She's taken this price over the 50 day SMA and beelined it just like the last one straight to that 200 SMA. Was no pause at all. And she hit it and she has fallen back. I expect that. It's like a high bubble. As soon as you see a high bubble, expect a pullback. Not a fall, just a pullback. You know, you bump your head, you pull back, and then you start going again. That's all I see happening here. They bumped their head, they pulled back, they're taking another gander, and I do believe it should go. Look at this. Our PPO has been running up for many, many days. Our MACD has been doing it for even longer, right from there. All this time she has been pushing up. Now we do see just a wee bit of pullback right now across the technicals. Looking at our 20 day, one hour view. All right, so you can see she is definitely in this channel. Now folks, we are waiting for her to break out of the channel. That's when you get your surges, your big runs. Once it gets out of there, because we're all watching this, so we all see the green light. We know when it's time to play. But while she's in the channel, you can still be making money, especially if it's a nice channel. Every time she comes down to this low, well, that could be a buy-in time. And when she gets back up here to the top, that would be a sell time. If you see the price is strictly staying inside of a channel, that is a pretty safe bet. Buy when she hits the low bar on the channel. Sell when she hits the high. She comes back down to a low. Buy it again. Wait for her to hit the high again. Sell it again. And hopefully you'll be ready when she breaks out. But in the meantime, you can be making money on these bounces up and down. People like to call it a scalp. Well, that all depends on how big that channel is. So we had a high bubble today of 33 cents before she decided to pull back and then dip. So she did dip. You can see a middle line here. That's 50%. That's the halfway point between the bottom and the top channel here. And she's arguing with that right now. This is where all of her fighting is going on. She did get close to that top channel, but it doesn't look like she's quite ready for a breakout yet. But she is in the vicinity and she has been climbing for many days. So she is worth considering. Now, I haven't actually looked at the stock. I have no idea what is going on. Maybe you'd be more interested in the stock than the warrant. Warrants don't get as much uh, volume as the stocks do. And if you like volume, if you like to see your charts moving steadily, you may want to consider the stock. So I am looking at AURW, the warrant. You may want to look at the stock, but I think this one, given a little bit of time, could break out. You know, as a YouTube content provider, somebody who makes videos for YouTube, I find myself perplexing. You know, if you want a lot of viewers, you got to talk about what they're interested in. And other YouTube content providers are making videos on stocks that are hot. Rocket stocks, meme stocks, stocks that already have thousands of people watching them. Easy to get all those people to watch your video. Well, I'm not doing that, am I? No. We're looking at stocks nobody's ever heard of before. PLSH. Never heard of it. Well, you should have. Ever since we talked about it, it has been climbing every single day. What about VVPR? Nobody knows about that one. It has been climbing ever since we talked about it. Do you realize that about 50% of the stocks that we've been looking at since we changed our format have been climbing? And I'm not even talking about the warrants. Folks, there's a lot of climb in stocks we've never heard of. Now, I may not get as many views as I want, but we're getting good information out there. So no, I may not have the most popular videos, but I got some hot videos here. We are making money. You can do this, folks. Open up those charts. Look for charts that have strong volume. Look like they're about ready to go over that 200-day SMA. Throw some channels in there. See if they're breaking a channel. And then go match it up with a filing or a news press that came out maybe a month ago that talks about something that's going to happen in the near future so that you can get yourself a comfortable position. DD, folks, it's not work. It's a treasure hunt. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.